Happy Morning. Friday. Happy Friday. Welcome to our celebration of culture. This is uh, very exciting to have you guys with us this morning. As you know, this has been a series that we've been working on that with internally with our team that we hope to be able to take it outside to our membership. And the idea, the hope is that we will help, uh, help understand each other, get to know some of our backgrounds, our traditions, things that we grew up with, the uh, kinds of foods that we love to eat, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, just some of the traditions that we are used to, uh, that we have today, that we had as kids, and really from our backgrounds. And the whole idea, as we speak on inclusion and equity and impact, the best way to do this is not just talk about it, but it's an action. And that action is to understand each other and celebrate each other and really get to know and understand what we all have and what we've gone through and what our backgrounds are, our history. So this is just a conversation this morning, just us talking. And I'll ask a couple questions, but we want this as free flowing as possible. So one of the questions that I really love to start with, because I love food, is some of the traditions that you're used to uh, growing up, some of the foods that your family, and the way they cooked, or some of the foods that you enjoyed as a child. So I'm actually gonna start with Brandy and just uh, ask Brandy some questions about what was your favorite foods? Um, well, growing up, I guess we didn't have any specific, like, cultural foods. You know, we, I just remember, I don't know, eating, you know, the normal dinners and, you know, food and whatnot. Nothing, I guess, special or, you know, anything exciting. So on your trip that you you guys travel to the for to the Carolinas, don't you? Yeah, we went to yeah, go to Outer Banks. Okay. And do you guys spend time cooking as a family together or do you guys go out when you're down there? Well, we usually go out sometimes, but with you know, COVID and everything, we stayed home a lot. So we my husband and his family, they cook like they're they're really good cooks my husband's a chef so we did you know crab legs bacon wrapped scallops we'd order pizza um you know shrimp clams so all the seafood while we were down nice. there nice nice to have a husband that's a chef yeah yep he's always teaching me because i i'm always learning <laughs> excellent yeah, well, so you're starting your own traditions then. Yes, exactly. Excellent. Good. Well, Lynn, what about you? Uh, well, I guess um, it's called soul food, and we greens and cabbage and cornbread and homemade biscuits and um, uh, meatloaf. Uh, my favorite was uh, cabbage, meatloaf, and cornbread. My okay. mom was an excellent cook. She did a lot of stuff from scratch. She loved to bake. Uh, I don't, I don't do any of that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the best food. Those are the foods we grew up with. Do you put jalapenos in your cornbread? No. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, uh, is that a, are, they, are they good? Is that good in the cornbread? Yeah, it is. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't had, cook, so. <laughs> what's that? I don't cook. So oh. that's my, that was my mom. She was the cook. <laughs> okay. Sounds delicious though. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Second. Ross? Um, I guess the biggest mainstay growing up in uh, my household was Italian. Um, my grandfather grew up next to a very large Italian family. Uh, I believe they had seven children. Wow. So they were, he always told me stories about how they were larger than life and um, they, they loved to have neighbors over. So he kind of absorbed that from them, and then he brought that into our family. So um, things like uh, there was always always pasta to be had. Um, it just if there was nothing else, that there was guaranteed to be that at least. <laughs> um, 
I, I sampled pretty much every, everything there is in Italian cuisine at this point. Um, and you know, that was, besides that, um, you know, actually, that was the biggest thing. Uh, there was the there was the usual um, like uh, I'm kind of drawing a blank now. Sorry, <laughs> put me on camera and I get all nervous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was the biggest thing. Okay, well, pretend you're not on camera. We're just talking. We're just sitting here around the table. Uh, we just happen to be on screen, but it's okay. So Ross, you're our newest member here at. Uh, Columbus Realtors, so welcome. This is your first opportunity to really engage. Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, backgrounds. By background, you mean? Where were you born? Uh, your family, brothers and sisters? Um, well, I was born right here in Columbus. Uh, I've lived here my whole life. Uh, just me and my sister. Um, and um yeah all the way back to my my grandparents they moved to ohio and they've we've been here ever since um okay. i have no plans of leaving i love ohio yeah columbus is a great great city great market the state of ohio is a very good state i agree where were your grandparents from um Paternal side, I don't really know. Uh, maternal side, um, my grandfather, he came from a very old English family. Um, and then my grandmother was actually Finnish. Uh, she was the first generation immigrant who came over. Um, so my great grandmother was fleeing the Winter War in uh, 1939 between Finland and Russia. Wow. Has your family gone back or have you been able to go back? Yes, we've gone back a couple times. Um, I haven't done so in a couple of years since high school, honestly. So it's been it's pushing seven years. I need to go back and visit sometime. Wait a minute, seven years just out of high school? That's not yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lynn, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, um, me and my brothers. I have three three brothers. We're all born here in Columbus, Ohio. My parents are from the South, uh, a place called Dixon Mills, Alabama. Uh, you may have heard of Thomasville or Linden. That's, uh, it's close to there. And then well, I think we're about three and a half, two and a half, three hours from Mobile. So you guys might have heard of Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Well, and when did they come to Columbus? Oh, wow. Uh, my dad, well, my, my mom had a cousin here. And so my dad came up first probably around the 1950s, I guess. And uh, he came up looking for work and then my mom came and then her sisters came and her brothers came. So we all, most of us are here. We have family here, still have that family down south, California, so all over. Nice, excellent. Brandy? Yeah, I was born in Columbus at Riverside. Um, I have a brother and a sister, and I grew up in um, Johnstown, Ohio. It's just outside of New Albany. Um, it was a village. I think we're now a town. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, I mean, I, from what I know, all of my family is from here locally. Um, I, I don't really know like the history or you know where anybody came from. I know my my maternal grandmother was um, Irish, like she has you know Irish heritage, but that is all that I know. <laughs> so growing up, what is your favorite memory of a tradition that you had uh, as a child? um i remember christmas time we would go to my um my dad's grandma's and or my my dad's mom i'm sorry my grandma um and you know she lived in a little house and just all of us would just pile in there and eat good food and have you know 
presence and you know just always like exploring her stuff like because she was into um like oh ceramics so she made like cups and porcelain dolls and she had all of this stuff in, in a back room she had a, a kiln and everything and she always had like perfume and all this jewelry and just all this cool stuff so it was like treasure hunting in her house <laughs> a little kid's dream oh yeah it was fun <laughs> that's wonderful yeah that's well, one of the main things that's great excellent do you ever get to play on the kill does she ever teach you how to use it nope no and no. she she doesn't really do any of that stuff anymore um, but I still have a lot of her stuff that she made. So that's Excellent. pretty cool. Wonderful. Yeah. Lynn, what about your favorite tradition? Well, I don't know if it was a tradition, but growing up, um, every weekend we were at uh, one, either my house, my parents' home, or at one of my aunts or uncles' home. And it was like every Saturday, every Saturday night we were somewhere and I, I was at one of the one of my relatives' home. And it's all of us, my uh, my cousins and my aunts and uncles. And it's just, I don't know that that's a tradition. It's just something that we did. We don't mm -hmm. necessarily do that much anymore. We kind of got away from that. Uh, but so now we only do like on, a, on holidays and special occasions. Okay. But yeah, I remember, yeah, always being at one of my aunt's house or they're at my, they're at my house and we're eating and just um, hanging out. Okay. Ross? Um, favorite tradition? Um... Well, of course, me and my family um, always do holidays together. It's it's a cardinal sin if you don't, as to us, family is everything. Um, when, uh, during those trips back to the old country, uh, I, I guess my favorite traditions were uh, going to the, uh, the summer cabin with my great aunt's family, because out there, um, they, it was, it was very, very traditional. Um, no electric, uh, limited plumbing, um, and any any food you made, you made it over a, a wood burning stove. So spending a couple of days out there, that really it brings you back to what what uh, life was like back in the uh, the world, the days before industrialization. Um, I do distinctly recall a uh, uh, ice fishing with some cousins, and. Wow. <laughs> the uh, the little gas powered drill we'd take out there, you have to uh, cut a hole into the ice to mm -hmm. actually open up a place to fish. And uh, those are some of the best times just uh, being out there with um, my older cousins um, out in the, just us, the wilderness, and uh, some time together fishing. Great memories. That's excellent. Now, were you in a shanty or just on the ice? Um, it was just on the ice because we were only about two miles away from the cabin. Um, it was right off a lake. Wow. That had to be cold. <laughs> usually, usually about the uh, 20 seas below zero once it's, the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, great. That is wonderful. And then did you catch and release or did you cook the fish? Oh, no, we, we kept everything we caught that had that went back and fed us. That's cool. Excellent. Nice. So each one of you are here at Columbus Realtors. Each, uh, each of you are very valuable to this organization and to the team that's here. How did you get here? What brought you here? Who would like to go first? Well, I was a student at Franklin. We used to be downtown at 200 East Town Street. And it was my last year at Franklin University, and I needed a job. <laughs> my plan was to be here one year. And um, I, so I, so it, was right, it was right down the street, so I got hired, and one year turned in five, and five years turned into 10, and I'm still here. <laughs> and how long have you been here, Lynn? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I, um, since 76. Wow. That's, that's a, a, 
that's a great history. You know, when I talk to people and I just talk about Lynn, they don't, I don't have to use the last name. Everybody in the market knows who Lynn is. So. <laughs> You've got great relationships that you've built. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. Brandy, how did you come about Columbus Realtors? Well, I was um, looking for something different, and I honestly had no idea about the real estate industry. I mean, I knew, obviously, real estate, but not what the association did. You know, I. It, I learned a lot coming here. So I, you know, got hired and like Lynn said, one year turned into many, many, many years later. And I've been here since 2006. Wow. So okay. yeah, it's flown by and I've learned so much and met some awesome people. Yep. And everybody knows you as well. <laughs> and the, the customer service that you provide is outstanding. And, Thank you. And the members uh, love talking with you and, and how you approach them. And I've listened um, to actually both of you and how you've uh, talked to members, how you deal with your the liaison, Lynn, as the committee, and, and Brandy talking to our membership. And you guys both have a great way about yourself, and it's wonderful because it's you're, you're building relationships um, within the membership and that's and that is really the foundation of Columbus Realtors and the relationships um, from the the board of directors the committees the committee chairs and our members themselves really cherish what you both do and Ross you're relatively new here just uh, two months now yep just two months okay and how did this come about? Um, well, my previous employer in May decided to cut our team uh, amid the COVID pandemic. Um, and that just kind of left me high and dry, unfortunately. So I was throwing resumes out everywhere that would accept me. And Columbus Realtors swooped in, saved the day, because I was, I was down to my last week's worth of money when I got hired. Oh, wow. Perfect timing, but you seem to have really settled in very nicely here and you jumped right in uh, talking to Matt and the team down there. You did not hesitate one bit to really engage and that's wonderful. And uh, so you were right on the phone and you were uh, fully in, involved. So welcome aboard. I'm glad to be here. So I have a question for the three of you. We're, we're really focusing on building a bridge, tearing down walls. And again, you know, we're very focused on making sure that we eradicate racism. We we build our equity and our impact with the the focus that Lynn has here and working with diversity and inclusion. What would you say to people? What do you want to say to help bridge and really celebrate who people are and their cultures and their their history and you know this is a little difficult for you to talk right now and it may um, you may think of things later which we can still incorporate at another time but what would you say to people brandy i would say you just never know what somebody's going through and you know just get to know somebody don't you know again you know this is a typical don't judge a book by its cover but you know you got to get to know them inside and hear their story and um you know just get to know them just take a chance and talk to people mm -hmm. ask questions and listen yeah okay it could turn out to be you know one of your best friends you just never know you know people that come into your life what's you know what they're going to bring absolutely ross what about you what would you say about mm. this whole idea this whole thought process no there there is a word for the realization that um other people aren't just backdrops in your life um it's unfortunately escaping me at the moment 
Um, but you, uh, it was like Brandy said, you have to uh, realize that um, everyone's going through their own things. Um, they've got their own stories. They've um, got a unique history of them. They are, they are people. So you have to, um, uh, you have to understand that uh, sometimes people are different. That's all right. Um, you got to learn to uh, tall or <laughs> it's just not really contrived. Um, it just, just uh, learn how to uh, love and tolerate, I guess. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Um, but I, I try to live my life by, uh, like Brandy said, don't judge a book by its cover because there's so much more underneath. Okay. Excellent. That's not contrived. And um, I like you know, what you said. Lynn? Yeah, I think what we're doing now, uh, I think is going to be a lot, really helpful, particularly mm -hmm. here in the, you know, within the association with, uh, you know, just having open, honest conversations. Uh, and I think sometimes that's difficult. And uh, so I, and I think this is a really good start, actually. So make that bridge toward people coming together. So I commend you, John, for the, the things that you've done around here. I think it's uh, going to be really a benefit to all of us. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And, you know, and it, and it, it, it is a start, but there can't be a finish. It has to continue. It has, you know, it's not a product. It's not a event. This has got to be an ongoing and ever changing opportunity. I saw something this morning I was driving in and I turned around to try to catch the young man, but he was gone. There was a young lady pulling a cart and looked like oh, her life God. in that cart. Yeah. And this young man had a hard hat on and his yellow vest on his bicycle. And he rode up and he grabbed the cart and he was riding the bike and, and helping her along. He was pulling the cart for her as she was trying to walk. And I couldn't catch up with him. He was gone. But, you know, that just little gesture, you know, it was maybe 50 feet that he helped her, if that, but that little gesture, what if it was 50 feet here and, and 50 feet there and 60 feet, or if it's a dollar here, you know, it's just that little act of kindness. And I certainly hope somebody will do an act of kindness for him um, because of what he did. And it was, those are the little things that changes who we are and helps us tolerate and, and understand we don't know. Um, and I had a conversation with somebody that they were going through a very wealthy neighborhood driving around and they looked out the window of their car and they said, look at that, look at that beautiful home. And they are cozy in their home. They've got beautiful cars, beautiful landscape. I'm sure they're eating really well. And boy, I wish, I could have that life. And I said, and they're probably looking out the window at a simple car with uh, very little stress in their life saying, boy, I wish I could be like that person driving by in the, and no, no adversity in their life or stress in their life. We always look and say, I wish I could. And the reality is we have to learn to accept who we are and like who we are. And then once we understand ourselves, we can start to understand others so any last words i really appreciate this opportunity just to get to, to know the three of you a little more each time mm -hmm. anything you would like to share uh just thank you for you know coming up with these different ideas and you know different ways to bring us together when maybe we wouldn't just go, you know, out on our own, like, you know, and ask these questions, you know? Yeah, you bring us, at least me, myself, <laughs> out of my comfort zone, which is like probably a good thing. I, I'm not necessarily comfortable with this, but but it's good for me. It's good to mm -hmm. do things that you know, fear sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You guys did great. Thank you. you really, yeah, you're very relaxed, and you know the more you do things like this, the easier it'll get. So mm -hmm. I uh, 
uh, congratulate you and commend you for uh, stepping up to the plate.